Welcome to how to build a carrier load. In the ITS dispatch system, one thing that you do want to do before you start building loads is you're going to want to go over to your admin tab and you're going to want to put in some of your data. You're going to want to make sure that you enter in your customers, who is paying you, your shipper, where your load is being picked up, your consignee, which is where the load is being dropped off. You're going to want to enter in your external carriers so that you have them in the system. And if you are going over the border and you are dealing with a customs broker, you are going to want to enter them in the system. While you're doing this, it's going to make your life a lot easier when you're building the load once the information is set up in the system. So what I'm going to go over right now is we have a new active load button and we have a new pending load. In the system, and a new pending load is a load where you don't have all the details or it's a future load that you don't want to assign a load number to. That's completely your discretion. A new active load is a load where you have all the details and as soon as you click save on this load, it's automatically going to assign a load number and put the load as open on your dispatch board. So what we're going to do is we're going to do a new active load today. So what we're going to do here right now is I'm going to get my bill to, now this is my customer, this is the person that's paying me for my load. We're going to go with A City Incorporated. The dispatcher is always going to be the person that is building the load and adding the load into the system. If you have sales reps, you can add up to two sales reps per load onto the system. Again, you have to add them in the system under the users and you have to change their permission to a sales rep by clicking the green shield. Your status for an open load is always going to be open. So a new active load will always be open. And you have a box here labeled as WO. The WO is a work order number. This is normally the number associated to your customer. This is normally their load number. So we're going to put in our load number here for the customer. Going down here, you've got the type. Now the type is the kind of haul that you're doing. Normally people use just the line haul, but you do have different options. You can go by weight, you can go right per mile, you can deal with pallets, you can do with tons, you can do labor, whatever you prefer. I'm going to leave it as a line haul as a point A to a point B. So in this rate box, this box here is the base rate of what you're charging your customer. So if you charge your customer a flat rate, you're just going to put the rate in this box and off you go. If you charge your customer different additional charges, then you're going to put the base rate here. So we're going to put $16.50 and then we're going to go on to add in some of the additional charges that we are going to charge the customer. The first one here is your picks and drops. So if you charge the customer for multiple picks and drops, this is where you're going to put that dollar value in, and this will be the total dollar value. Not $25 per, it's going to be $100 if they're doing four. Beside that is your FSC. This is your fuel surcharge. Now you have an option of doing it as a percentage based off of the rate, or you can do it as a dollar value. So we're going to put $450 for fuel. Next we have our other charges. And when you click this blue dollar sign, you're going to have a box populate up that says charges and advances. If the customer has given you an advance, you can label that advance here, put the date that they've given it to you and the amount, it's going to deduct it off the total for the customer. And if you're charging the customer multiple charges, whether it be for tarps, permits, lumber fees, detention times, you can label that all in here with your amount, click OK, and that's going to put all that into your rate total. What we want to do now is we're going to want to add in our carrier, whoever is hauling the load for us. We're going to select Warren Gibson. Our equipment type, we're just going to say it's a 53 foot reefer. And now when we do our carrier fee, we're going to hit this blue dollar sign. Now again, you can set up your carrier fee based on whatever you want, whether it be a line haul or rate per mile, however you'd like to do it. We're going to say that I'm paying them $13.50 for hauling the load. And I'm going to give them $400 for doing fuel. And I'm going to click OK. This is going to total up what I owe my carrier. It's going to show me that it's in current Canadian currency. Now we're off to my shipper. Now again, the shipper is where you're picking up the load. So you want to click in this box here. We're just going to pick a spot. We're going to go from Helene's Cleaning Supplies. Now you're going to see here that you've got little green plus signs everywhere. And what these little green plus signs are is shortcuts for you to be able to build your load or add the information into the system as you're building the load. So this way you don't have to add it all through the admin tab, you can do it right directly on the load. So Canyon's Cleaning Supplies from Lagoa, Ladoga, Wisconsin. We're gonna say that we're picking up this load 
on the 27th. The description, we're going to put cleaning supplies. We're going to put that it's a truckload. We're going to say that we're picking up 1,500. We're going to say that our weight is 2,000 pounds. Now you're going to notice that the, my, my description type and quantity and weight all populated down here for me. That's so you don't have to double type all the information out. Now for shipping notes. The shipping notes are for the carrier. These are any notes that the carrier needs to know for hauling this load, whether it be for picking it up and so on and so forth. Any information that they need to have, this is where you're going to put it in the shipping notes for them. The PO number. This is your purchase order number or your pick order number. This is the number that they may need in order to pick up this load. So we're going to put in a purchase order number here. And now again, my customs broker. If I'm going over the border and I am dealing with a customs broker, I can put their information here, which gives my carrier the information to call them if they run into any issues while they're going over the border. Kind of the middle person, this way you don't have to do it for yourself. So now we're going down to our consignee, and our consignee is where we're dropping off this information. So we're going to select Markham Warehouses in Kansas City. We're going to say that we're going to drop that off on the 30th. My description type, quantity, and weight has already auto-filled for me, so I don't have to do that. My delivery notes are going to be can speak to Bill. He will direct you. This way I can be as detailed as I want. This way my carrier knows all the information that they need to know when they get to this location. They know who to speak to and that this person is going to direct them wherever they need them to be. Again, you've got your PO number for your delivery, so we're just going to put in another number here. Now I've got a box down here where's my pro miles and my empty. What this will do is this is going to calculate out the miles for the trip. It's basically going to calculate out how many miles from Ladoga, Wisconsin to Kansas City. And it'll tell you that it's 552. I'm going to click Save. And we have now just built our first carrier load. Now I can change my load statuses whenever I do need to. And it's already got a load number here, so we're good to go. That, that is how you build a carrier load.